I'd like to start with the cabotage uh, funds, a fund that has been uh, growing since uh, 2003 when the Inland uh, Shipping, uh, I beg your pardon, 2004 when the Inland Shipping Act was enacted in two, uh, 2003. Uh, more recently, you said that it would be dispersed. And uh, that would relate to how ship owners comply with the, um, the conditions for accessing the funds. We'd like to know what are these conditions for accessing the funds as prescribed? Now, thank you very much. Um, just like you said, we are committed to the full enforcement of the cabotage law. And part of the provisions of the cabotage law is a clause the cabotage vessel financing fund, setting aside a fund um, which will be contributory but will help growth tonnage in our country. Now this fund will be governed by a guideline that will be issued by the Minister of Transportation and we expect those who are interested in assessing the funds to comply with the guidelines. Part of the guidelines is the fact that it's either you are acquiring a vessel or you are refinancing the acquisition of a vessel but at the bottom line is the growth of tonnage. Now, you are expected to contribute some percentage of um, equity to the project or the asset you want to acquire. Um, the banks that will be partnering with us is also expected, or if their banks or bank is, is or as, uh, will be expected to also contribute their own um, quota to financing the project. So the number one thing is that there must be um, plans to acquire an asset or to refinance an asset or to embark on a project that will contribute to the growth of tonnage in our country or building capacity in terms of ship ownership in our country. Condition precedent number one. The condition number two is that you must also have your own equity contribution. Number three is that the project, or number three, yes, the project or the asset must be viable. Now, um, before now, there was a condition that there must be a contract. That condition is being reviewed, you know. You must not necessarily have a contract before you can assess the fund. Those are the three fundamental conditions for you to assess the fund. All right, the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety, the agency you manage, uh, took delivery of 49 uh, billion Naira floating dockyard in Lagos more recently. And we hear that you could save as much as $100 million annually, annually if properly managed. Have you put any measures in place to ensure that this facility reaches its full potentialities? And if you have, what are the measures you like to have? Well, we, we acknowledge the fact that we don't have the capacity and capability to manage a floating dock. It is not our primary mandate. It's not a, a primary area of competency. And so we're going to partner with private investors or private people who have expertise in managing a floating dock to manage the dock on our behalf. We are looking at the numbers, and of course that meaning feasibility uh, studies, and a number of uh, models for managing the dock. So we're making a lot of progress, and very soon we will uh, unveil to Nigerian people how exactly we intend to progress. But we are clear in our minds that we'll get private people to manage it, and that we must get our economics right. We have looked at the studies, the preliminary studies, the viability is not in doubt at all. The feasibility is not in doubt at all. So you can be sure that going forward, for reasons of sustainability, we managed by private persons, um, and that's it. All right. Nigeria's um, Ships and Ports Facility Security Code, uh, the ISPS code. code, has been put below 100%. Uh, we'd like to know what the exact rating is. Now, um, the rating of the ISPS Code Compliance, the International Ship and Port Facility Security Code, which is um, a regulation or a convention uh, of the International Maritime Organization um, pursuant to the events of 9-11 uh, in the US, when we realized that it's not only uh, via aircraft that people could do a lot of damage to our security architecture, that people could also uh, uh, carry out terrorist acts via uh, seaborne transportation. Uh, Nigeria's level of compliance used to be between 12 and 15 percent um, when the code was initially passed. But we've had two different ratings in the past one year. One is from the United States Coast Guard 
which rated us about 80% compliance. The other one is the Department of Transport in the United Kingdom, which rated us about 80% uh, compliance. So if you ask me, um, we've attained about 80-85% compliance, and we're doing everything humanly possible to close gaps, close the gaps, the identified gaps, and ensure that we achieve 100% compliance. So, yeah. It's usually not very easy to achieve 100% compliance, but we're optimistic that we're working very hard. We're in the right direction. Nigeria is one of the models, model nations being shown up by the IMO and the international community as a nation whose facilities are compliant with the ISPS code. So, so that means that we are still within an appreciable rating? Absolutely. Yeah. All right, let, let's also look at um, the issue of um, pirate attacks and kidnappings, activities that have no doubt taken their toll on Nigeria's territorial waters. And uh, as far as the Gulf of Guinea, uh, in the first quarter of this year, 2018, there was significant rise in, the, in these activities. I think we had about 36 cases recorded as against 17 that were had in 2017 within the same period. What are you doing to ensure that this is very well suppressed going forward? Thank you very much. I acknowledge as a fact that piracy is an issue or it's a global issue. crime, not just a global issue, especially in the Gulf of Guinea. It's an issue, nobody, no, no doubt about that. Um, Nimasa had formulated what he called the total uh, maritime security, total spectrum maritime security strategy, which is built on four pillars. Uh, one of the things we're doing is that we're investing in intelligence gathering, and um, to that extent, we have um, acquired a lot of intelligence system, including a, a satellite surveillance system, um, which gives us a best eye view of our entire maritime space. And our in intelligence system has also been integrated with the Falcon Eye, which is the intelligence system of the Nigerian Navy. And so together, we have a best eye view and watch over the Nigerian maritime domain. Um, so aside from the fact that we're investing in intelligence, we got the Federal Executive Council to approve a $195 million deal for us to invest in hardware uh, to build up our response capability. And so we're going to acquire a number of special mission aircraft, special mission vessels, uh, fast intervention boats, a command and control center, um, as well as training of special intervention forces. Um, all in a bid to tackle the issue of piracy. We're also pushing for the early passage of anti-piracy bill to ensure that we have the right legal framework to prosecute those who are found culpable in the area of piracy and sea crime. We're, we're working with our uh, neighbors too in the region. So we've put in place a number of things because we think that pi uh, uh, fighting piracy is top on our agenda. Mm. It's clearly top on our agenda and we're getting support from the international community. We're getting support from our federal government. But we are focused on the fact that we need to tackle it to make our, our maritime domain safe, our exclusive economic zone safe for uh, maritime activities, especially shipping. All right, we, we must also talk about one of the achievements of your administration uh, in, the, uh, in the area of training indigenous uh, cadets, both within and abroad. Uh, how many people have been trained? How many of them have been trained and how many are still undergoing training and, and where? Well, in the, era, the um, capacity building is a piracy area for us. You know, our mandates are two, mandate is two prong. The most important one is regulation, and the other one is promotion of uh, indigenous shipping. So, speaking to all of that mandate, whether in regulation or promotion of shipping development, is the issue of human capacity. And so, for us, it's a priority issue. And if you're specific about the issue of training of seafarers, uh, one way I identify the fact that we didn't have enough people. Uh, doing international voyage or on board vessels doing international voyage. We intervened as an agency and we have sent between 2,100 um, persons or 2,200 persons to various centers of excellence uh, of learning in the world to be trained as seafarers. Um, the challenge we have is, is the same globally, the challenge of sea time, um, providing them sea, practical sea experience after they will have earned their academic degree, either as nautical scientists, marine engineers, nav naval architects, what have you. Now, but we're tackling that we've been able to break the jinx of that by sending 298 persons um, on board various vessels in Europe and in, in Egypt. Uh, aside from that, we have about 360 persons that have already had their sea time and have their certificate of competency are on board 
uh, vessels doing uh, international voyage already. So we have 360 already completed sea time with COC who are working on board in uh, international vessels. We have 298 doing sea um, time now. We hope that in the next one year we'll send about 500 again. And we're going to reduce the number. We have over 1,200 that have graduated that are waiting for sea time. We have between 300 and 500 persons who are still in various institutions of learning. We are looking at a second uh, 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 model of the Nigerian Seafarers Development Program, where we will incorporate sea time from the beginning. We'll get states to partner with NIMASA and incorporate sea time from the beginning. We'll call that NSAP3. That is still in its infantile stage or formative stage. Those are the things we're doing. Then, internally, we're also building capacity. Um, recently, we signed an MOU with the World Maritime University to train our own people in terms of regulation, which is dynamic. You know, regulations change every day. You must keep building the capacity of your people, equipping them. Uh, the, sh the, the ship owning companies and the operators of ships shouldn't be more equipped than your own people who are regulators. So we must keep retraining our regulators. So in the area of capacity building, we're also training our own people in Nemasa to leave them at top of their game so that they can regulate um, shipping and promote uh, shipping. That's another dimension. Then the third thing is that we're working with Nigerian Content Development Board to look at the capacity of shipbuilding companies, ship uh, repair companies or ship uh, building facilities and see how we can support them so that their businesses will thrive, create employment for our people, create wealth for our people. So if you look at Nimasa, in the short term, um, we've made a lot of strides. We have reduced um, um, accidents or incidents on our waterways to literally zero in the past one year. That's not a, a feat that is very easy to achieve. We've reduced uh, the incidence of substandard ships on our exclusive economic zone to its various minimum. For me, it's between 10 and 20 percent, which is not good enough, but at least it's an appreciable progress. Now, in the area of capacity, we are able to send 298 persons to go do sea time around the world. That's a jeans that has been broken. In terms of revenue, which is on the low side, which is um, at the periphery of our mandate, we've made appreciable progress. For the first time, we're able to remit to the Consolidated Revenue Fund a sum that put together everything they've remitted before now. It will not equal what we have remitted in the past two years. All right, so on a final note and on a, a lighter note as well, we hear you will resign very shortly as a DG of the Massa and run for governor of your state, which is River State. How soon is this going to happen? I don't know where I got that information. <laughs> what I can say <laughs> is that I have mandate to work with my colleagues in Nimasa to ensure that the maritime space in Nigeria is safe and that. Our people benefit from maritime activities and that our country becomes the mar leading maritime nation in Africa. That's the immediate mandate. And I've been consistent that whenever I make up my mind to put myself forward for the office of governor of River State, I will make it public. And so there's nothing like resignation for now. If I will resign, it will not be a private affair, it will be a public affair. Right now, let's get the work going. Get Nimasa working. And I believe that Nigerian people appreciate what we're doing. The president has commended us. The Federal Executive Council has commended us. I don't know what else. That um, I, I think we're the most commended agency today in this country. I don't think of any agency that they've been able to turn around within such a short period as we've done in the matter without praising our modest efforts. Thank you very, Thank you very much. much.